Saturday. It's all good. I have my biggie mug here. I'm so cozy. I've got on my um, I've got on my little Costco deer foam slipper socks. I do not want to take these off ever. Um, they're so comfy. Yeah, I totally recommend snagging a pair if you have them at your Costco. So, a viewer sent this sunscreen to me. It is a Canadian sunscreen by Vichy. It is their um, SPF 60 Anti Shine Anti Brilliance lotion. Like it's like a dry touch lotion. It's water resistant up to 80 minutes. And this is a chemical sunscreen. It has um, Mexeril XL in it. Mexeril XL is uh, also is goes by the chemical name Dromitrizol Trisiloxane. And it gives good um, coverage of UVB and UVA. Um, and then this also has some filters for UVB. It has octocrylon, homosalate, octisalate. And then in addition to the Mexeril XL, which is giving you some UVA, some good UVA protection, you also have avabenzone at 3%. Avabenzone uh, protects against UVA1 and UVA2. It's not super stable, but in the presence of things like Dermatrizol or Mexeril, it's actually a little bit more stable than it would be without that. And you get really good broad, broad UVA coverage with those two ingredients. <clears throat> And, um, you know, th this is a Canadian sunscreen. You can't buy it here in, in the U.S. A viewer went to Canada and purchased it and sent it to me. So thank you very much. But this sunscreen is SPF 60. If you go into a, a store in, in the States and buy a sunscreen that's a chemical sunscreen that's SPF 60, it's even though they're both the same SPF, it's not as good protection. In other words... Mexeril, which isn't approved for inclusion in sunscreens in the U.S. Actually, it is, but we only have one sunscreen with it. Um, does does a much better job at um, giving really broad UVA UVA um, protection. So basically, what I'm saying is that Canadian sunscreens and European sunscreens, that chemical sunscreens, are are going to give you better. Just they're just better. Um, you know, there's not a lot. Unfortunately, there's not the kind of long-term robust epidemiologic data to show like European sunscreens do a superior job to American sunscreens in terms of prevention of photoaging and skin cancer, but it's like logic would follow that they do if used correctly. And that's the challenge with doing those kinds of studies is that people just don't, just don't use sunscreen correctly. Um, so anyways, about this particular sunscreen, though, for those of you in Canada, oh my gosh, it is, I was saying all those good things about the filters, which, true, that, that's great, and it is water resistant up to 80 minutes, but oh my goodness, this irritated my eyes to no end, you guys. I thought I was going, at first I thought it was, sometimes we get, um, um, a lot of, uh, oak, oak pollen, and it can flare my allergies. And so I thought that's what was going on, but come to find out it was the sunscreen. I put put it around my eyes like I always do. Oh my gosh, it burned and burned. And even, even after I got out of the shower, it was still burning. And it dried out my eyelids to no avail. So it's really, really not good for around the eyes, a word of caution. If you have oily skin though, I think you really like the way that this goes on. It um, definitely dries down matte. When you're putting it on, it feels, it actually feels a little oily, a little greasy going on but it dries down matte really nicely. So I think it would play fairly well with, with cosmetics. It does kind of ball up a little bit um, in certain areas though, I noticed that. And you know, that's often the case with water resistance sunscreens, they do that. Um, but yeah, don't put this around your eyes. It's not my favorite Canadian sunscreen. I prefer the Garnier Ombrelle SPF 60. And the reason for that is that this um, has just Mexeril, um, XL in it, which, as I said, is Dromitrizol. L'Oreal has patented um, Mexeril, and it's really, there's there's actually two types of Mexeril. There's Mexeril XL, which, which is Dromitrizol, and then there's Mexeril SX, which is Ecampsol. Mexeril SX, or Ecampsol, is, um, is water-soluble, whereas Mexeril XL is oil-soluble. 
and they both give protection into UVB and UVA, but together they're synergistic. So I really like to see the two ingredients together. That being said, this sunscreen does have avabenzone in it, so you are still getting some synergy into UVA, but I'd really like to see those two, those two good filters in this instead of just the one. Um, so, you know, I don't know. Combined with the fact that it's so irritating around the eyes, it's not my favorite. And you know, with a water resistant sunscreen, you actually want it to be well tolerated around the eyes because you're gonna be using it when you're active. And if you if you put this on your, on your forehead and sweat, it will run into your eyes and you will be miserable. I mean, you will have to terminate your workout and go inside. I, I almost felt like I, I was like having some kind of hay fever attack. My nose started running. I was just really an unpleasant experience all overall. So yeah, um, that's that. The sunscreens with Maxarill in them will be very drying around the eyes. A lot of the time they, um, they'll have alcohol denaturant in them, which that one does, or some sort of low molecular weight alcohol to help dissolve those filters. And that can be drying. So yeah, that one in particular, but I shared this over on my Instagram a few days ago. So um, I know not all of you enjoy doing Instagram and I totally understand that. If you are on Instagram, I am gonna plug my account because I have been a lot more active on there in terms of posting product reviews. And you guys that follow me there seem to really enjoy them and I'm able to do, to, to have a faster turnout and turnaround as far as that goes. So like, for example, I'll just snap some photographs of some products when I'm out and about, and then I'll quickly do a little recap review and talk about the ingredients within the caption. So, um, you know, follow me there if you are at all interested in more product reviews. But yeah, several years ago, when Instagram kind of first got on the scene, came on the scene, I loved it because I just love looking at pictures, other people's pictures. And, you know, I followed a lot of accounts that I found very inspirational and motivational. And now when I go into my Instagram, my feed is just so many ads and I don't see everyone's posts in any kind of chronological order. I mean, it's been this way for a while. And so it's just not a pleasant, as fun of an experience for me as it once was. So I mostly just go on there to do my thing and to interact with you guys shortly after I post and try and keep the interaction going as long as I can. But yeah, I'm not nearly as into Instagram as I once was. And I also try and see, you know, like other other YouTubers that I like. I, you know, I like to go and like their posts or comment on their posts to support them. But otherwise I find the platform like very arduous and, you know, not, not the social experience it once was. It's more of just like a series of ads. There, there are a lot of ads on Instagram. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got this in a FabFitFun box a long time ago and I kind of have put it here as a throw. I think it looks nice. Well, hey guys, what's up? I am headed out to the UPS store right quick because I have to return I purchased uh, an additional curtain rod that I don't need. I thought I would need two, but I didn't end up needing two. And then I also got a different drape, but that didn't work. So I've got to send those back to the Amazonian rainforest. Um, and yeah, that's ordering stuff on Amazon's the return process is so painless. Like you don't even need. Uh, to print anything off. You can just go in there so long as you have the Amazon app on your phone and just show them the little form or whatever. It's pretty handy, but uh, yeah, I, uh, ooh, this house has some...
update on the function of beauty shampoo i'm still totally loving that stuff you guys it, it's just been working really well for me and you know i have to go back and look at the ingredients in mine because i know that when you go in you fill out a survey of what it is that you're looking for in your shampoo like say for example you have color treated hair you can go in and like you know put that in is that that's one of your concerns that's not one of my concerns but anyways i'm telling you guys this because i think the ingredients vary a little bit from uh product desire to product desire i just passed by the library and it made me think of um it made me think of the book that i'm currently reading it's it's pretty good you guys i i really enjoy it but you definitely have to be in the right frame of mind and you definitely have to be in the mood for this type of book and it definitely just has to resonate with you as far as the vibe because the dialect is really weird in the book if you're if you don't remember it's called um the awakening lands it's like three books actually within one and it's about uh the pioneers in the states you know like in the Ohio Valley area and uh, <laughs> the first book is called The Trees and it's all about how like they're out in the middle of nowhere like trying to survive and develop the land and whatnot and uh, it just talks about it just paints these certain situations of different characters like kind of getting lost the trees is like going out into into the woods and they, they have almost like this this ominous vibe to them uh kind of like children in the corn or something but uh yeah and like people going out into the trees and just going wild and i think it really is speaking to the profound need for some kind of human contact and for um like man and man's reliance on by man i mean humans reliance on uh on personal contact and it's interesting reading the book and reading about early, early life, you know, when people were developing land and states and whatnot and coming here and it's just really interesting reading about early, early, early life in the states, uh, this very survivalist kind of situation where they're just trying to get by and they were cons like they were counting their blessings that they managed to pump out eight children and not exsanguinate in pregnancy and, uh, you know, then leave behind you know children and whatnot to take care of take to take care of what they started anyways yeah it just got me thinking you know nowadays there's a lot of technology being developed called artificial intelligence that is largely replacing human interaction and it kind of gets you thinking like just this these scenes in this in the book early on where, where people find themselves in situations where they're isolated out in the woods it becomes like, wow, what if we would find ourselves isolated in our own woods of artificial intelligence and like lack of, of human interaction? Like Amazon. I mean, now there are places where, you know, like uh, my need to go into a store is substantially diminished. Like aside from chit chatting with this UPS person, um, I could totally renovate my entire, you know, refurnish my entire apartment without ever having to look at a human. Um, and so, I don't know, <laughs> I guess it's a profound thought, but like, what would happen if, if we became so isolated in technology? We kind of already are with social media. I mean, all of our interaction, a lot of our interactions are online and social media. And, uh, you know, you kind of have to wonder like, what that's doing to us psychologically. The trees, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, it's a good book. I see you, cutie boy. Say hey, everybody. Dibby. Say hey, everybody. Hey. Now, Mama made that afghan, but I don't think she made it for you to flop on. Well, I just look so cute. You guys, he, um, my mom got this dryer ball <laughs> for her dryer, but she said it's too hard. She got these at the Dollar Tree, but Tybee has been obsessed with them, so it's his new toy. <laughs> you like your, you like those, huh?
Yeah, I just came over here to my mom's to watch Tybee. She actually had uh, something to do today, so she is not, she's not here. So she won't be in the vlog today. I know you guys always enjoy seeing my mom, but she'll be back tomorrow. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and the fun Halloween decor. Oh, we're getting some funky lighting. Uh, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow.